What is going on, good looking people? Vakey it's a bit here for the morning chalk up. Hey, I've never met a person who can go from sweetheart to savage, quite like Sarah Sigmund's daughter, and today I have the privilege of talking to her. How was training? Good session? Training. Good session? Did you say that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, amazing. It's um yeah, it's been challenging our training because of everything, but I'm so happy that the CrossFit Games are going or like are still on. So you have something you can look forward to. Got it. Like, so like you say that the CrossFit Games before mm, when we were all going to leave for California now before the 19th, like that was a lot or very stressful, like having to travel in this situation. And yeah, you, you just want to be with your closest ones when the world is in a pandemic <laughs> situation so absolutely yeah yeah oh well thank you so much for making the time tonight i really appreciate it yeah pleasure is mine mm -hmm. and i wanted to start by asking you about your cooking because i saw on your instagram that uh, you've been doing a bit more cooking and that uh the I am a yeah and that the master chef in, in iceland came and visited you is that right yeah 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 let's call him master chef he'll be super happy with that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell us more about that like are you um is cooking something you've always done? Yeah, I've always been, um, I've always loved food. <laughs> and I've always, um, or always, I started in like 2017. I loved making everything from scratch. So I was making my own almond milk. I was making my own uh, peanut butter, almond butter and everything. And that's where like my cooking skills, are. well, I won't say that I'm a <laughs> good chef yet. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I love to cook and like I can just get stuck in trying something out for two, three hours and food prepping is never boring or anything. But so I had this, um, there was a chef in Iceland that's very known and a very good chef that contacted me and he was making his dream come true by making a, a chef uh, TV series in Iceland. Awesome. Or a, a cooking TV series, yeah. So this episode was like taking some like, uh, what do you say? Like everything natural and making something like that looks like a, a hundred dollar, a hundred dollar plate. That's very simple yes. and it looks very good. So we were testing that out and, and I cook a lot with my fingers <laughs> <laughs> when you're, uh, you have so much calluses. So I never feel the heat or anything. So if I'm like heating something <laughs> on the pan, I always use my fingers that's and, awesome. uh, and he was so impressed how much I could use my fingers. We were grilling and I was like, oh, I'll just turn it with my hands. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was, uh, I have some hidden skills there. I would say that. Awesome. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that you've, uh, I don't know how recently, but you've become your own coach, like, right? Like you, um, yeah. Tell us yeah. More, like, how's that been? Like um, just kind of looking after your own training. It's been, and stuff. Yeah, it's been challenging, but it's just like, you just have to become like you can't connect emotions with your programming. Like um, that's a little bit what I dealt with in the beginning was that I was like, oh, I feel like this and I feel like this. Like you just have to coaching Sarah is a way different Sarah than me training. Like I I can never I always have to think about the coaching me as another human being. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And that was a little bit challenging in the beginning because you would you would go by feel and you would go by emotion. So that's been, um, it's been challenging, but it's very helpful or helpful. It's very, um, what do you say? Like giving, like I get a lot of, a lot out of doing it myself. Like I've always been the person that, Hey, I don't need this. I can just do this myself. And, uh, and being your own coach, you have to get advice from different areas to make the perfect programming. Like, I can't be the best in programming gymnastics. I can't be the best in programming Olympic weightlifting. I have to get my knowledge somewhere, try it out, and see if it works for me or not. So absolutely, it's been uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun, and it's a learning process. So yeah, hopefully, awesome. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> yeah, as your what do you do? You feel like your numbers are getting better? So like your strength numbers, your gymnastics ability. Do you feel like that's improving? I would say. I would say that everything improves a little bit. Like I'm not, my strength is not just going straight up. Like I think when you're at that spot where I am now is that you want to make everything 0.5% better. And that means that you're doing something right because 
like, okay, it would be a dream if I could just PR by 10 kilos again. But that was like a little bit in the beginning of CrossFit. You would PR almost each time you would train. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I was 10 kilos from my all-time PR. And that's a really good day. Um, so I would say that I go a lot by how my body's feeling, uh, how also my mental or mental status, I can always feel if I'm getting... Uh, like overtrained that I get very emotional and and uh, everything is hard and nothing's fun anymore and and that's a little bit of trigger so I have like these small triggers that remind myself of okay I have to go in this at this road now yeah for sure so, yeah and is there any um any particular gaps or like um I don't want to say weaknesses because you don't have any weaknesses but any is there any gaps you've been trying to <laughs> any gaps you've been trying to fill specifically in your fitness um, I would say that I'm just like the road of getting stronger is just always the road that every girl is in and I mean the girls in CrossFit are so freaking strong and also so uh, fit like almost everybody can run and bike and now it's just who can improve a little bit and catch ground a little bit and and I would say like my biggest weaknesses are always like the sporty stuff like as the athletic stuff that I didn't get when I was younger so like throwing a ball and catching a ball so like how I've been starting my training sessions is like throwing a ball catching with a left throwing catching and this is just like challenging for me well people are like why are you playing around and I'm like I'm, I'm definitely not playing <laughs> Classic. so uh it's uh I would say like the sprinting stuff and and also like high skill gymnastics that's always like a, a big gap for me. But I mean, that's the fun thing is when you see the improvement in those areas. So. Exactly. Exactly. You haven't done any, yeah. um, any raisin spitting like I saw BKG is doing. Did you see? What? Ra- uh, <laughs> I saw BKG was doing raisin spitting. It's, um, it's like a, com- a, it was a competition he was doing with his friends. <laughs> I thought. Maybe, oh yeah. No, I haven't been doing. I thought maybe that's like an Icelandic sport, like a uh, spitting raisins as far as you can. No. <laughs> No, okay. God, is that too DK in the summertime? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, how are you feeling about? But maybe after the game, I yeah. will do that. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling about the new structure, like the um, the online going to top top five? How's that sitting with you? I mean, it's a lot of pressure. Top five is a <laughs> it's a very like hardcore cut. I mean, I I would say that top thirty girls that are competing now are the best in the world that it's going to be really challenging for all of us to be in top five because it's going to be a battle um what i'm a little bit afraid of is just that like how is it going down and like how is the scoring going to be like like rogue was we could see everything after each event like it is in a competition so you pretty much see where you stand like is this going to be just hidden from us for three days and we have no idea where we are each day and yeah and will we just know it on the sunday or like how how is this going down and that's a little bit what's stressful but i mean how i'm gonna perform like it's not gonna change if i know the score from this girl or this girl like it's just gonna it's a bonus if i know anything but i will still give it all my best yeah awesome and you've historically you've done really well in online competitions is that right like the open you've always performed really well yeah yeah, yeah, cool. Oh, that's awesome. And so thinking ahead, let's say you do make it in the top five. How do you, what do you think the major differences will be from competing in a stadium with, you know, lots of athletes, lots of spectators, all your support crew to just five of you, maybe on the mm-hmm. ranch or wherever they're going to have it? How does that feel? How, what's the major difference it's going to be? I mean, I think it's just going to be an uh, awesome experience. And being top five, it's just, I mean, that's my goal now. And like the thought of the competition of only five girls for four days is going to be so much like you're going to, you're going to need to control this little fella a lot (laughs) for days, (laughs) but it's going to, I think it's going to be so much fun and a good experience. Like I remember when we went to the ranch 2016, we were so out of our comfort zone. We had no idea where we were going and we were just in an airplane and we were just like, Oh my gosh, what's happening? And uh, and that was just such an awesome experience because it was a little bit different. So, like, I love the crowd and, and everything like that, but I'm used to training by myself always and in your own lane and just focus on you. 
That's awesome. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yes. And what's the – is it looking likely that you'll be able to travel to the US, you know, come October? Is that, is that a reality? Uh, yeah. So I have a, like a B1, B2 visa, which is like a, a little bit more than a tourist visa. And that's what you needed to travel to the States. So I was good to go. Awesome. At least uh, for – from what CrossFit HQ said that we needed, so great. So I think that I'm, <laughs> I'm good to go. Yeah, nice. And looking ahead to next season, um, what would you like to see as far as the sanctional and regional kind of? Because they, you know, they're tossing up the idea of maybe doing like a hybrid version of regionals and sanctionals. What do you think is yeah. the perfect solution, or what would you like to see? I, I mean, I think open is always a good start, and uh, regional has always been one of my favorite competitions. It's just like you're representing Iceland and everybody everybody in Europe is like like supporting their own country. So it's a, like I remember when we were competing, like me, Kristen, Sam, and they would say like, ah, oh, Sarah from Iceland and all the Icelanders are like clapping. And then it's Kristen Holstead, all the people from Norway are clapping. And it's just a different atmosphere, and you're actually representing your country just like at the games. Well, sanctionals are a little bit just like, oh, maybe there's going to be a lot of competition in that uh, at that uh, crossing competition. Like maybe it's, uh, people are not going to compete there because this is bad timing because the games are after three weeks or something. So I think regionals, you just have to perform, and everybody has to perform, and that gives you a little bit like more pressure on on being in shape there. So, but how it was before was that, like, they're still going to host these competitions without it giving you a games qualifier spot. So it will just be small competitions now instead of sanctional. So I love regionals. <laughs> yeah, awesome. But I think whatever they're going to do, it's going to be the best solution. Yeah, awesome. I love it. Cool. Oh, well, thank you so much for making time tonight. It's so great to hear kind of how you're going with training and hear a bit more about your cooking and all that stuff. And, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be. Um, I'll be. Wait, chat. my cooking show. Yeah, I can't wait to try it. Hopefully, soon I can see you in person at an event and I can uh, experience your cooking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I'll be cheering for you from over here in Australia, and uh, really, you. really hope that you make thank the top five you. so we can see you uh, see you throw down with the big guns. Awesome. awesome. Have a great yeah. night. Yeah. Let's hope for the best. Yeah. Thank you. Eat some Australian strawberries for me. I will do. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Sarah. <laughs>